Hey everybody, this is going to be a quick meta update for 7.31b. Uh, prior to this patch, I think high tempo was just too much. Like every game I played, all the people were just rushing low cost items, grouping up as five and killing people. Maybe that's just like a mortal bracket EU or whatever, but um, I think it's just too powerful. It's too powerful to have high tempo, uh, low cooldown Dota. So that's what I'm like, hoping for them to fix in 7.31b. Um, and we're just gonna see exactly what that is. Banana slam jam. So mana cost reduction now stacks diminishingly. I hope you guys had your fun with the Storm Spirit 5 Null Talisman Arcane Blink build. Definitely was needed. I was surprised it didn't work like this in the first place. Um, prior to this, there was really only Fairy's Trinket. So this was something I guess they was a bit of an oversight on their part. Uh, but yeah, you could effectively get like 60% mana cost reduction if you bought Null Talismans past the 25 minute mark with a Blink Dagger Arcane Blink. So that's good. That's gone. Boots of Bearing. I think they were definitely a bit too strong. They're just an item that when you're snowballing, you buy them. The unslowable duration from my perspective when the patch came out, it's nice against items like Diffusal, but it also kind of ruins heroes like Venomancer, for instance. So I think that needs to be a careful balanced mechanic. Orchid Malevolence now requires a recipe. Yeah, my biggest issue when the patch came out was that they made Orchid even cheaper. Uh, I thought the buildup was much worse, uh, so not as many heroes could buy it, but it is a silencing, ganking item, right? So if you're trying to farm, you're trying to find space on the map, and the enemy has this item, it was like 350 gold cheaper after 7.31. Uh, that's just significant. That's like a whole 45 seconds to a minute faster, and that's just that much less time for you to farm your Manta or or BKB or whatever. So yeah, uh, definitely don't mind that. Neutral items update. Brigand's Blade for some reason was magical damage in the first place. I remember seeing this prior. I never really understood why, uh, but now it is physical instead of magical. I remember a wyvern died in Cold Embrace to somebody auto-attacking, and that's how somebody learned that this is it was magic damage. Uh, the physical damage, I think, will make it much worse against towers, if I'm not wrong. It was already, it would like shred towers, so I'm imagining it'll be much worse against towers. Otherwise, probably about the same. Batrider movement speed increased by 10. Okay. Sticky Napalm. Shard now has a 50% chance of applying Sticky Napalm. <laughs> okay. So people were doing like Manta Batrider right when the patch came out. They fixed that because it was absurd because your illusions applied the shard. And now they're making it so the shard's just way worse. I, I feel like the shard has turned into a like 40 minute purchase rather than a 15 minute purchase. People were pretty much just buying this. It also prevents you from being disarmed when you're lassoing. So people were just solo killing people full to zero uh, with the shard. So uh, I imagine this just makes it a later purchase. It's pretty bad now i think at least early flaming lasso mana cost reduction this is a pretty big buff for batrider because he is a movement speed based hero so uh huskar was definitely i just did a huskar replay by rtz he was definitely overpowered uh i think to say the least they nerfed his base agility by three the hero's base armor was already really low so this just makes his laning stage that much worse before he gets the helm of iron will a lot of people kind of rush that at him so definitely hurts him super early game and he'll have like five or six missing agility in the mid game because of the growth as well so reasonable nerf they also nerfed they just nerfed his landing phase i'm down for that um they also nerfed his level 15 talent not a big deal there agility growth on lena and intelligence growth buffed the damage on light strike array also buffed by 20 and the mana cost on laguna blade reduced Wow, the mana cost on level one Laguna Blade, significant. So what I noticed about Lena was you got a ton of stacks on her nukes in lane, which made her a really strong laner because her her stacks are now accrued by how many units you hit with your spells rather than how many spells you use. But like when it came to like ganking or going back to base, you can't keep your stacks up. So it's really difficult. I think the caster Lena build, they're just buffing it. They're making it so you can be a caster. I think we'll see a lot more Lena because of this patch. I feel like she's back in the mid lane. I, I I'd be down to do like an Etherlands Kaya Ags kind of build. I wonder if that's going to be good because the shard makes it so you do extra damage on your nukes for every stack of fiery soul you have. So giving that extra like 30 to 70 damage on all your nukes could just make it that much better. I, I kind of want to try it. We'll see. A lone Druid who is also absurdly broken. Uh, damage reduced on his wolves drastically. 
I had lost to a few lichens, but I didn't know if he was actually broken or if it was just like a beginning of the patch. People didn't know how to deal with push heroes. Uh, this is significant nerf. That's like a... It went from 26 damage level 1 to 19. That's like a 30% damage reduction. That's insane. I feel like... I feel like Lycan's just done. That's like, this is insane. Was he really that broken? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I didn't check out his win rate specifically on Lycan, but that, uh, I feel like this kills the hero. Uh, that's so much damage just gone. That hurts your laning phase. That hurts your tower push. That hurts your farming. His wolves are like super fucking important. So a little bit odd. Meepo already getting one of his stat growths reduced after they gave him a ton of stat gain buffs in the 7.31 patch. His win rate was also quite high. Uh, apparently his talent applied twice to clones that's interesting morphling i think he should get buffed his win rate was like 40 percent or something it was very low he had lost i think five percent win rate uh so they're buffing his stats so five movement speed on morph not a ton but it's honestly not nothing on a hero who does limit lack mobility before mana regeneration for waveform and then a little bit of turn rate improvement riptide hit threshold increased from five to six now triggers on Naga and all of her illusions every six attacks from Naga and her illusions combined. That's what I thought it was originally, okay? Like, I, that's what I thought it was. Meaning, like, I thought it was... I thought it was that when you and your illusions attacked a total of five times... It, that you triggered one but what it actually was was you and your illusions had it was like you had to attack the same thing five times which was trash <laughs> like by the time you've attacked a jungle creep five times it's already like half hp so you're never getting that early proc on riptide so this is actually way better the damage got decreased though so prior to this patch riptide triggered on 17 percent chance then it looked like they buffed her because she wasn't picked very often because one out of five hits is 20 percent but then they nerf her back down to 16 percent and then they reduced the damage on riptide so i guess riptide didn't proc on all of her illusions so if you remember when naga used to have an active on riptide you would push riptide and then all of the illusions and naga would riptide so they're putting that back in which is better because if you're farming two camps at once they'll both get riptided so i guess overall this is a buff a pretty massive one it does definitely encourage you separating your illusions and if you are farming a jungle camp your illusions and lane will proc riptide faster definitely want to try out naga i think this is a pretty nice buff for her the level 10 talent also got buffed to plus 30 in order to like compensate and uh yeah yeah i think this is good base mana regen on puck increased turn rate increased okay they nerfed puck pretty hard when they moved her ags to her 25 talent uh just gave her a lot of bad matchups and it made it so that in the mid game bkbs were really powerful so buffing her a little bit think that's fine pudge flesh heap is no longer dispellable okay the active on flesh heap was apparently dispellable the cooldown significantly reduced the active gives you flat damage block against all types of damage just so people you know if you forgot what they did to it duration rescaled to be longer at max level but shorter early and the mana cost is also reduced early game okay oh so they buffed the level 25 talent to be extra strength and then also extra damage block so this turns it into 32 damage block instead of 20 i mean at level 25 is that a big deal i can't really imagine it being a big deal but it I guess it's free, so. Ricky, who I thought was quite strong. I had a lot of games of Ricky already played. I think I went 3-0. and oh. I think I won three games already with Ricky. Base movement speed reduced by five. Not too big of a deal later on in the game. It mainly matters in the lane because later on you're blinking around. But then they nerfed the blink strike mana cost, which is relatively significant because the hero doesn't generally buy mana regen items. I've talked about going like third item Battle Fury on Ricky. I've seen it like three or four times on pretty high level players where you go like Diffusal Manta Battle Fury or like Diffusal BKB Battle Fury. But if you don't go the Battle Fury, I feel like you're gonna really struggle for mana so we'll kind of just have to test this out to see uh what exactly its implications are in terms of your mana casting later on in the game i mean it's especially painful early because you're blinking around a lot so hmm. in lane at least like you can blink for cs and stuff definitely need to buy a wand now okay 
Interesting. Sleeping dart, sleep duration reduced from four seconds to three. I don't think the sleep duration being nerfed is a huge deal in general, but I was mainly thinking about like support Ricky buying a meteor hammer and offlane Ricky buying a meteor hammer. I think that kills this against a lot of matchups. Like any matchup that has a Yules, like they can, a button they can press instantly. They should be able to press it. BKB, Yules, uh, like phase shift on puck, spin on jug. I mean, I guess with the travel time on Dart, you could maybe hit it, but man, that's it's like a much tighter window. So, I mean, it's just, it's more difficult to use Meteor Hammer. There it is. That's really all there is to it. Cooldown on Electric Vortex decreased by two seconds. I think Storm was mainly viable because of the way mana cost reduction worked, so I guess they gave him a little bit of a buff because of that. I feel, I feel like Storm's still kind of good. They also nerfed Orchid, so you're probably done buying that item. I'm not sure, though. Now deals self-damage based on Techie's current HP rather than max. Self-damage decreased. Enemy damage decreased at level 1, especially. Cooldown also decreased at level 1. Okay, so it's... Interesting. That's a buff overall. Definitely a buff. Level one, it hurts a little bit though, going from 275 to 200. But overall, later on in the game, a buff. Explosion now slows enemies within the explosion radius. Oh, did it not used to slow? I thought it did. I guess it only slowed the targeted latch to. Disarm duration rescaled to be lower early and more later on. Seems like they tried to make techies a weaker laner and a stronger later game hero. So that's what they were going for. Not too familiar. You'd have to ask Sir Action Slacks. It's the only hero he can play. Terrorblade. Cooldown reduced by five seconds on Metamorph. Reflection radius increased. Illusion damage taken reduced by 20%. So just flat out buffs for Terrorblade. Uh, he got, in the last two patches, he's received 0.8 agi gain reduction. That means by level 10, he has like eight less agility, which is pretty insane on a hero who like triple dips on the agility because of all of his illusions. So uh, definitely could see why this hero needs some love uh, i haven't gotten to try him yet he doesn't occur to me as being amazing he's not usually good in defusal metas because terrorblade absolutely has pace of the game issues and mana issues ever since they put mana on sunder so tiny was seemingly broken in the carry role was seeing it a lot in my games bonus armor reduced by two three four and tree bonus damage decreased on grow so making him weaker in terms of armor at all stages and making him weaker in terms of tree bonus damage at level one and two grow that's yeah, something and then they also nerfed his level 15 talent so the biggest deal about tiny is that his shard is like a free battle fury or when i say free it's a 1400 gold battle fury it's even better than a battle fury uh, so in terms of like acceleration of farm. So I think the combination of the little bit of reworks they gave and then moving the shards up five minutes, it just was a big deal for carry tiny. I honestly didn't find it too impressive, but I do think it's viable still. Like I think it was still, I think it was above average good prior to this. And now I think it's probably just like, if it's a good tiny game, then you can pick it. I usually view tiny games as being good when there's like multiple people to burst with your combo. And then, uh, you know, you man mode it against whoever's left. Undying, zombie damage reduced. Wow. Zombie damage significantly reduced on Tombstone. It's a lot of zombie damage reduction. I think any hero that five mans early was necessary to nerf. Heavenly Jump now deals damage, now grants vision before applying the slow. Oh, so that means if you didn't see them before, they wouldn't get slowed, but now it looks for a target technically with vision, and then it applies the slow, so that's strictly a buff. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, I think the patch is overall pretty good. I'm a little upset they didn't touch Enchantress. She's my number one ban hero in the Immortal Bracket right now. I think her landing stage is incredibly powerful. I think the patch still remains. Uh, I think you should definitely keep an eye out for spellcasting Lena. Uh, I'm going to be trying out Naga Siren. Um, I still think Ricky's good. Um, not, I mean, I feel like Lycan's pretty dead. Lone Druid uh, still seems okay. He was already super broken. But yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on the meta update. Um, and when it comes to the heroes I'm playing specifically in the carry role, I'm really looking at Ricky, really looking at Ursa. All these early Diffusal Blade buyers or fast tempo heroes. Um, Anti-Mage also seems incredibly strong. Um, if you're looking at the support role, I'm really into Omni Knight right now. I'm not going to give you guys too many heroes to go through right now because it's not really any different than the when the patch came out, but I tried Omni. I've played against Omni. It feels really powerful um, in the offlane and support role. So those are kind of my highlights for like major updates. Keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.